the flagellate intestinal and luminal protozoa. First and the most important of intestinal flagellate protozoa is Giardia lamblia. Giardia lamblia inhabit the upper part of small intestine sticking to mucosa also in the gallbladder and bile duct. عشان بعد كده هنعرف ليه هي موجودة في الأماكن دي بس. Morphology The trophozoids are pear shaped bilateral symmetrical with two nuclei in the broad end and motility is slippery like falling paper. There are four pairs of flagella which are attached at certain places in the body of uh, in the cell of the trophozoite. There are also near the sucking disc two dark medium bodies. Here this is the nucleus. The two nuclei make this part seeming pale in color. This is the boundary of the sucking disc having to be in the ventral side of the cell at a good space. Also, this is the tapering posterior part behind the sucking disc. Usually in stain films, except with special stains, we cannot see the flagellum. Here we can see some flagelli by the scanning electron microscope and we can see here this is the ventral pair. This is also the posterior pair here and this is another ventral pair and here can be the anterior pair of flagelli arises here and passes around the sucking disc to go like this and the other flagellum also passes anteriorly to go outside in this place. The cysts are ovoid containing four nuclei. It usually contains two protozoa, protozoids uh, uh, besides each other and so we have to see four nuclei and medium bodies and the remnants of flagelli and axonemes here. The nuclei may not be apparent so well but these are two nuclei and these are two other nuclear. Life cycle of Giardia. Similar to that of Entamoeba because the trophozoites are attached to the mucosa by sucking disc. When Trophozoites pass to the lower ilia, they begin forming cysts. Inside the cyst, the trophozoites divide once. Infection occurs by swallowing the cyst. It is a fecal oral transmission, like that of entamoeba, and the cyst dissolves in the stomach and the trophozoites go out attaching to the duodenal mucosa and divide and colonize rapidly and feed on bile and bile salt specifically. So they are present in the duodenum, upper small intestine, and in the gallbladder and bile duct. This is a diagram for 
the cycle, life cycle of Giardia intestinalis or Giardia lamblia. Here is the cyst giving rise to trophozoites. Trophozoites divide by binary fission and then form the cyst again. In this diagram, we can see the structure of the cyst as we see there are two trophozoites beside each other. The trophozoite structure is also well apparent here with the flagelli as we discussed before, the medium bodies here and also here are the nuclei. By lateral position we can see the sucking disc is taking about two-thirds of the cell body symptoms and pathogenesis many cases are asymptomatic the main pathology is due to its feeding on by source and its attachment to the intestinal wall. Children are most affected. The infection can begin within the first year of life if the child takes artificial feeding, not breastfeeding. Breastfeeding gives the, the child immunity or gives the infant immunity till he can pass the first year, maybe also the second year of life. Um, there is a free patent period of 10 to 30 days according to the infecting dose and the immunity of the patient before appearance of the organism in stool or appearance of the cyst in stool. Mild disease, there is flatulence, mild diarrhea, abdominal pain, anorexia, and epigastric tenderness. But in severe giardiasis and in chronic giardiasis, there is clay colored stool due to deprivation of bile, hyaturia, hypoproteinemia, hypogamma glomerulinemia, weight loss, cachexia, folic acid, and fat-soluble vitamin deficiency. The mild and acute disease can pass with, without treatment and it can transform by this way into chronic giardiasis. In chronic giardiasis, there is a regular shedding of the cyst, so we can find the cyst in school one day and two days without finding them, and repeatedly they come again in pieces and they disappear by at, at the interval and this makes it difficult to diagnose the disease. Severe and chronic diabetes can also make the patient having fat intolerance. He can't eat any greasy or fatty vegetables, uh, sorry, meals like um, cakes, like um, heavy soups and something like this. So we can find that the patient is fat intolerable, having chronic diarrhea, and also it can, and also he can be cachectic like those of like those of malabsorption Architecture of the intestinal villi is changed 
with chronicity of the disease, there are degrees of atrophy due to the effect of the sucking disc. The clinical disease is similar to tropical flu or celiac disease. The symptoms may appear in cases with achlorhydria in the stomach and hypogamma globulinemia and deficiency of secretory immunoglobulin A in small intestine. So, there may be affection of stomach also with repeated vomiting. There is a relation between the eradication of the infection and T lymphocytes. Also, there is protective immunity against DRDSs by mother's milk, as I said before. X-ray picture of chronic symptomatic DRDSs is similar to malabsorption syndrome with mucosal edema segmentation of barium. Its diagnosis is by stool examination, which is not enough in chronic cases due to irregular shedding of the cyst. Finding trophozoids in incubation or string test or biopsy can help in diagnosis. Detection of trophozoids and cysts by ELISA or indirect fluorescent antibody test or Giardia antigen in schools by ELISA cockroach antigen and detection and also by immunoelectrophoresis or counter immune electrophoresis. These can detect the antigen of Giardia in stool in case of rarity of the cyst in stool. In this picture, we can see Giardia trophozoids attaching to the intestinal mucosa here, and this shows the cyst stained with iodine, and this is shows the cyst unstained. This is the boundaries of the cyst. This is one nucleus and this is another nucleus here. And the remnants of flagelli and the exostyle inside. Epidemiology of Giardiasis. Giardia has worldwide distribution. It has the same socioeconomic factors as Intamoeba histemitica, meaning that it is present in crowded areas with low sanitation. It is suspected in case of travelers' diarrhea and in outbreaks of diarrhea due to water pollution. Isoenzyme studies show similarity in the zymodemes of different species of Giardia, animal and bird species from different hosts. This shows that animals can act as reservoirs of infection. Treatment of Giardiasis The usual treatment is metronidazole or flagyl 0.2250 mg per kilogram three times daily for five days. It is effective and has less side effects than quinacrine or atabrine, which was used before. Prevention is by sanitary water supply, especially in rural areas. Also, we must avoid food contamination by 
good washing of vegetables and avoidance of flies. Addition of iodine to drinking water which kills the cyst within 20 minutes and we must stay till iodine sublimates or disappears from water before we drink it. The second common flagellate, luminal flagellate is Trichomonas vaginalis. Trichomonas vaginalis inhabits the female genital tract and the male urogenital tract. It is pear-shaped with anterior single oval nucleus, as we see it here, and four anterior flagellae. Three of them are free, and undulating membrane is made by the, fifth, uh, the fourth flagellum. The undulating membrane doesn't reach the posterior end, and the flagellum comes out as free flagellum here. Um, this forms also a costa. The undulating membrane base is called costa because it is rigid sometimes and seen like dark color. Here is the costa apparent and also, there is exostyle here. This is called the exostyle, which is a thickening of cytoplasm to keep the form as spindle shape or as pear shape form. The flagellae all arise from a big blepharoplast the origin of flagellae here and it appears in the anterior end of the trophosome. There is no cyst stage and the exostyle extends from the anterior to posterior end to protrude outside here. And also we can see it here. Life cycle is direct. There has it has no cyst stage, and the trophozoites are transmitted sexually. It could be from toilets or fomites. Sometimes it is a venereal disease. The symptoms. The pathogenic effect of Trichomonas vaginalis is due to its feeding on the daughter line bacilli, which maintain the low pH of the genital tract, so it prevents pathogenic bacteria from causing inflammation. Also, it feeds on the contents of mucus cells after killing them by contact effect. In females, there is vaginal discharge associated with burning and itching. This vaginal discharge may be offensive due to secondary bacterial infection. On vaginal examination, there is high premia with small red punctate lesions. Sometimes there is only high premix spots, which looks like strawberry vagina as it is said. Urethra sometimes is involved in heavy infection and a relation between the infection and cervical carcinoma is suggested. Infants can also get the infection during labor. 
from infected mother. Also, they may have trichomonal respiratory disease or conjunctivitis. Males usually have asymptomatic infection. Symptoms are those of prostatitis with thin discharge, dysuria, and nocturia. Infection may involve seminal vesicles or higher areas of urogenital tract of male. Diagnosis. The main diagnosis is by vaginal swab and examination of the discharge. It is better put in glucose saline solution to keep the trichomonads alive. Examination of urethral discharge is also done for males. In males, examination of urethral or prostatic discharge also centrifuge during examination can show the trichomonas. Culture of the discharge can give better results. Serological tests as indirect hem agglutination, gel diffusion, and indirect fluorescent antibody tests can give good results. Treatment, metronidazole or flagine 250 mg three times daily for five days. Both couple must have the treatment at the same time. It should not be given to pregnant women on the first trimester. Clotrimazole as local vaginal treatment is given daily for seven days. Flagyl can be given to infected infants after the fourth week of life as 10 to 30 milligram per kilogram body weight daily for five to eight days. We have also ciliate protozoa as intestinal protozoa. This ciliate protozoa is balantidium coli. Balantidium coli is the only ciliate parasite to man and animals. It inhabits the large intestine, the cecum, and lower ileum. It is a big protozoan about 60 by 40 micromillimeter in average. Larger sizes are also present. The body shape is ovoid and it is covered with cilia all over. It moves in a directional rolling movement like a crone football. It has a funnel shaped cytostome near the anterior end. This is the picture we can see the trophozoid of Balantidium coli with big nucleus and small nucleus here called macro and micro nuclei. Here the cytostome is not well apparent, but we can see it in the slides in the laboratory session. There are two nuclei, one large called macronucleus and is rounded or oval or kidney shaped and a smaller one, the micronucleus, which is rounded and is close to the larger one. The cytoplasm contains contractile vacuole and food vacuoles. Cysts are spherical or ovoid, about 75% micromillimeter, and it has a thick refractile wall containing only the macronucleus. Here. Symptoms and pathogenesis. Valentidium coli secrete hyaluronidase enzyme to pass in between the mucosal cells. After mucosal invasion, there 
is secondary bacterial infection causing severe inflammatory reaction around the trophozoite. The intestinal lesions is not like that characteristic amoebic ulcer because erosion of the trophozoite and colonization is irregular. Many cases are asymptomatic carriers, but clinical cases are similar to acute amoebic dysentery, or it may be only colitis and diarrhea. Balantidial infection or dysentery is very rarely accompanied by extraintestinal spread due to the large size of the trophozoite. This is a picture of balantidial invasion in the mucosa of the colon. We can see here several trophozoites colonizing in a ditch like or tunnel like erosion of the submucosa of large intestine. There are many trophozoites here, here, and here also. Infection with Balantidium coli is rather rare infection in many areas, but it is common in the big raising areas or the pigs which can act as reservoirs of infection can aid for endemicity and spread of the disease. Outbreaks of balantidiasis may occur in crowded places. It is common in Latin America. Um, treatment of balantidium coli is by oxytetracycline teramycin 5 100 milligram three times daily for 10 days. Also, iodoquinol drug uh, derivatives, 650 milligram three times daily for 20 days can also treat the case. Here we come to the end of our intestinal protozoa, which are pathogenic, but the, the non-pathogenic intestinal flagellates as they are relevant or not very important, we didn't mention them. We mentioned only the pathogenic intestinal protozoa and the commensals which look like intamoeba histolytica only. Um, the other type we don't mention them and they are not relevant to our studies. Um, now we come to the end of our session and good luck for everyone.